And we are live here at the Lair of Voltaire. You are looking at an actual photo of me, a live photo of me holding a skull. Are you tired of feeling what? stuck in the office? Get out of the call center and work from home on your own. Oh. I just got another. Are you tired of oh feeling gosh. stuck in the office? No. Get out of the call center and work from home on your own. Oh. I just got Are you tired of feeling oh, stuck in the office? No. Get out of the call center. Okay, that was a, that was disastrous. Uh, welcome to the Lair of Voltaire. Sorry about all of that crazy audio at the beginning. Uh, yeah, I know Andrew Gomez. What? Uh, if anyone ever heard of this show, Tales from the Crypt Marathon. Oh, okay. Rocking. Well, anyway, thank you for joining me here at the Lair of Voltaire. Sorry about that awkward intro. This is my very first time trying out this whole new streaming platform. So I guess before we even begin, first of all, let me know that you can hear me. Can everyone hear me? I should do a mic check also. That's not how you do a mic check. Hi. Was it an ad? Yes, it was an ad. An ad popped in just as I was going live, which was truly annoying. And I see that my mic seems to be working. I think everything's working. Oh, we can hear you. Thank you, Cheyenne. Thank you, Katie. Uh, thank you, Javlikyo. Thank you all. Thank you for joining me. Uh, there was no video newsletter in May, nor in June because of reasons, primarily because, as you know, for a while now, I've been doing live streams instead of the usual pre-recorded video newsletters. And uh, thank you, Madison. And uh, SYX969, 69, what? Six nine. I don't know. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Dark Raven, welcome aboard. So I was doing live streams and I was doing them on my phone and they looked really terrible and the autofocus kept going in and out and in and out. And there were people who complained. They said, your live streams are making me nauseous. I have to like tune out after a couple of minutes. And I couldn't agree with them more. I found it truly annoying as well. So um, I decided to spend some time and do some research and figure out how to do a proper live stream. So I am live streaming with my Canon, the very same camera that I use to film uh, the Lair of Voltaire, uh, rather I should say Gothic homemaking. Um, and I wanna say thank you first and foremost to all of those of you who wrote in to me with tips and suggestions. Sorry if I did not get back to you personally. I'm months behind on email, but I did go through all those emails and, uh, and I learned a lot. So thank you so much. And here we are, I'm using StreamYard and uh, I think it's going to help us to, I mean, is it looking, it looks better, doesn't it? <laughs> I think it looks better. Uh, good evening from Biloxi. Wow, I haven't been there in a while. Have I ever been? I've played in Biloxi once. I'm almost sure of it. Uh, truly one of my biggest inspirations, always making the best of what you have and giving me ideas for my house and apartment. Thank you, Heidi. And thank you for tuning in, and muchas gracias, México. Bienvenidos, mis amigos, de, mis amigos de México, por estar aquí esta noche. Um, now, those of you who watch my video newsletters know that it has been a while since I've started one with, gracias, Daniel, that I've started one with upcoming shows, because there haven't been any upcoming shows to announce. Well, I've got a surprise for you because I have a hell of a lot of upcoming shows coming up. So I'm going to tell you what they all are right now. Let's go ahead and throw a, a graphic up on the screen. This is where I'm playing near you. July 31st, Seattle, Washington. That's just in a couple of weeks. I really hope the word's going to get out about that one because it's, uh, you know, it's happening very, very soon. August 6th, Kansas City, Missouri at the Riot Room. August 14th in Las Vegas, Nevada at Scarlet, which is at a club called Artifice. And uh-oh, here come the cops. I always maintain that I've never been able to make a phone call or do a live stream in New York City without there being sirens. And truth be told, there they are. So uh, August 21st, Los Angeles, California at Bar Sinister, which is located at Bordner's in Hollywood. 
August 26th, I'm in Providence, Rhode Island at dusk. August 28th, I'll be playing for the very first time ever in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania at Creature Feature Weekend. And then September 3rd, 4th, and 5th, I am returning to Dragon Con. You know I'm excited about that since there was no Dragon Con last year. Last year would have been, I think, the 21st year in a row that I've headlined at Dragon Con. And you know, then it didn't happen, which was sad. Broke my streak. September 10th, I'm in Austin, Texas at Elysium. September 18th, I'm in St. Augustine, Florida at Ancient City Con. October 1st, I'm in Orlando, Florida at the Abbey. October 2nd, I'm in Tampa, Florida at Orpheum. October 9th, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee at the Concourse, though I do believe it's a different building now, but it's still called the Concourse. All right, someone's blasting some tunes out there. Not good ones, but they're blasting tunes. October 10th, I'm in Dallas, Texas at It'll Do. October 16th, I'm in Boston, Massachusetts at the Hard Rock Cafe. October 22nd, I'm in Denver, Colorado at HQ. October 29th, I'm in New Orleans, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana. That LA always confuses me. At The Goat. And November 13th, I'm in Mansfield, Texas at Steampunk November. What a list, huh? And uh, that's quite a lot of shows. I'm so glad to be returning to the stage, and I hope that I will see you at one of those shows. And there's more shows to be booked, so we got a ways to go. Uh huh. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see. I am being told by my trusty assistant. Is it the Iron Man crap? Oh, this, there's uh some spammers here, so we're gonna get rid of them because I'm just. Can't get down with spam. You're blocked. Bye. Bye. Oh, wait. I hit the wrong button. I want to hit. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just get rid of them for good. Había otro solo era ese. Mr. Helicopter's got to go. Mr. Helicopter has got to go for good. Okay. Bye. Um, I don't know what it is with, with these people, but. Um, there's got to be a better way to get your message across than spamming somebody's live stream with something that's not even relevant to what's being said. Sayon, good to see you. Sean, nice to see you. We'll see you in Seattle. And uh, Kathy the Cup, oh my God, to catch you in Gettysburg. Well, I've never played in Gettysburg before, so I look forward to seeing you there. Um, oh, wait, why? You know what's really weird? I just realized my... Give me, give me one second to do something here. Work from home on your phone. That was annoying, huh? Okay, so that ad that was playing when when we when I first got online apparently is still playing in the background. It's so crazy. So you might hear a little bit of background noise for a second, but hopefully it won't last for too much longer. There it is. Okay, now I've got a live image, and I can see myself, and I can read your comments. Um, so anyway, those are the upcoming shows, and next I want to talk about, I made myself a, uh, a note, I made myself notes on the back of this Halloween plate, but anyway, my live stream is no longer, it's like not at all synced up, I gotta try this, yeah, my live stream is not at all synced up, so I'm just gonna go back to my control panel so that I can see what I'm doing. Maybe if I go like, maybe if I go like this. Hold on a second. Just bear with me, folks. Give me a second here. Oh, you know what? I just realized something. There, there we go. I did what I wanted to do. Maybe I can. Can I manage participants? All right. That's good. Okay. There I'm live. There I'm not live. Whatever. Sorry, folks. This is all a little confusing for Grandpa Voltaire. Uh, I'm doing what I can. Doing what I can. My computer is non-responsive. <laughs> oh man, this is such such. Okay, how's that? Is that better? No, it's worse. Excellent. Okay, there we go. That's just gonna have to do. It's gonna have to do. Um, so in any case, I made myself notes on the back of this Halloween plate. And uh, I guess I had written on here upcoming shows. And after that, I want to talk to you about Bed, Bath & Beyond because, you know, the time has come where Bed, Bath & Beyond is starting to put out their, um, their 
scents, their hand sanitizer scents. And of course, they will be having some kind of pocket back little thingy that looks like this, some kind of little bat or skeleton or other cute little thing. Now, I have my own. This is called the Globlin. Look at that. Let's turn it around. There we go. Let me, let me find a nice blank space to exhibit it. There we go. How's that? This is my Globlin. I designed this myself, and the Globlin uh, holds bottles of hand sanitizer that uh, are the same exact size as the ones from uh, Bath and Body Works. Did I say Bed Bath and Beyond before? Bath and Body Works. So now is the time to do two things. One of them, now is the time to go to Bath and Body Works and pick up Vampire Blood or Perfect Pumpkin or whatever new Halloween scent they may have this year. And it's also the time to pick up a Globlin if you don't already have one. So if you don't already have one of these adorable little hand sanitizer holders, you can get it at uh, my web store and the, there's a link in the video description below. So just look for that. Halloween home decor time obviously is upon us and the stores are slowly starting to uh, have their Halloween decor offerings every single year. People say the same exact thing to me. They say, Voltaire, when are you going to have your very own Halloween home decor line? And I always say the same thing. I already have a Halloween home decor line. You know, it just so happens that it's at Society 6. But this is, I would say this is one of my most popular designs. Oh, God, yes, yellow ale. Yellow ale. Yeah. Um, sorry, we got more, more malfeasance in the uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, spammers are back. That is correct. But, you know, I... Look, I don't like playing whack-a-mole. I have better things to do, but I will play whack-a-mole. I will play whack-a-mole. Oh, my God. In any case, yeah. ¿Qué pasa? I'll do it. You can do it? Yeah. Okay. How are you going to do it from over there? You're going to come over here and do it? Okay. You know, you're wearing a negligee. <laughs> You sure you want to come over here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So again. Pero mira, vamos a separar. Let's let's separate these screens a little bit. Yeah, Natasha, you know, all you can really do is block them. That's all you can really do. Uh they're really annoying. And I gotta say, I wonder if it's a stream yard thing because I literally never had this problem before when I was uh live on YouTube with my phone. And the very moment I started using StreamYard, there was just like all of these weird spammers saying like all sorts of bizarre crap. But in any case, oh, and a lot of people are saying hello to you. Man. Hi. Hello. Oh, look, there's another this idiot. Oh, my God. We got to get rid of this person. Hold on. Let's go like this. Let's just, hold on. Let's scoot this. Oh, my God. I'm making such a mess here. Let's scoot the screen over. I guess that... Let's go like that, and then let's go remove, report. Remove? Bueno, vamos a hacer así. Good. Okay. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Certainly don't want to join the clan with ya. Oh, I'm working on a hell of a boss album. That's super cool. I always said, well, there's a lot of people who email me, and they're like, why aren't you a voice on hell of a boss? I say, I, I don't know. I, I agree with you. I feel like I should be on Hell of a Boss, too. In any case, as I was saying, so this is probably my most popular design. This is called Halloween Moon. I drew this with my own little fingers. And I say it's my most popular design because I see Chinese factories ripping this off. I've seen this on eBay. And it's really weird. They sell this same exact throw cushion except super terrible quality because they don't have the original artwork like I do. And, uh, and they sell it without the cushion inside. It's literally just like the empty bag. And I also saw it, I think, as a shower curtain. So I'm always, like, mildly flattered when stuff like that happens to me. And I'm like, oh. It's one thing, like, when another artist sees your stuff and copies it. And you're like, okay, you know, that's, you know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. But, like, when a factory in China does it, I'm like, am I famous? <laughs> like, how the hell... Did this factory find my art and decide that they'd make a lot of money if they were selling it? Like, 
do they know that I'm not making that much money? Well, whatever. So I'm always a little bit flattered. It's like annoying and flattering simultaneously. But this comes on throw pillows. It comes on shower curtains, cutting boards, iPhone cases, laptop cases, all sorts of really cool stuff. So you can find a link in my society six door. And I have lots and lots and lots of designs. I'm not going to pull them all out now, but like, for instance, the Voltaire Crest comes on a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm looking across the room at a million cushions because something you may or may not know about me, I, I am not the kind of person who throws his art up on Society6 and then just says, buy it, suckers, and I hope it's good. And if it isn't tough, I literally buy all my own stuff so that I can make sure that the quality is good. And I've had situations where the quality wasn't good, like towels. I think Society6 towels, they do not meet my exacting standards. So I don't offer towels. There's, you, you will not find any of my designs on towels because I, when I bought some of the towels, I was very unhappy with them. So I didn't but I can certainly speak for the throw cushions, the cutting boards. Basically, I've bought pretty much everything else. The comforters. You know what's really nice is the <laughs> the amor. Pásame uh, una cobija. Check uh, this out. I'm going to get my unit to pass me. See, sí, yeah, yeah. Maybe the, the bat one. Bats and filigree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, want to, I want to show you something. So, you know, I'm sitting here bragging about how great the quality is on Society6. I want you to see this. This is so good. This is one of the blankets that we sleep with every night. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? It. Don't fold it. I want to unfold it. Yeah. All right. So here it is. It is made of fleece. I want to find you. Where's the where's the, the main bat? It's covered in bats. But I want to find you like the really big one. There we go. Where is it? Yeah. Can you help me with this? Can you grab an end? Let's 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 roll this out. There we go. I mean, we're doing such a Oh, there! All right, there it is. That's quite a big bat. There we go. And it's got a whole bunch of other bats on here. It is so soft and so <laughs> cuddly. I have one of these. I have one of my Briar Web design with a giant spider on it. I have one of that. Drives a rack and it's crazy. Imagine waking up with a six foot in diameter spider on top of you. Ah. Uh, in any case, so the Society6 stuff is pretty good. And, you know, hey, I also wish that I could walk into like a, I don't know, a Joann's or Michael's or Kmart even or Target and like have a line of my stuff there. But while I slowly work on that dream happening, I do have my stuff on Society6. So if you like the stuff, please go check out the links below and pick up something nice for yourself or for a friend. And I'm done plugging that. I, let's go back to my list. <laughs> what, what's next on my list? Gothic homemaking. Gothic homemaking. Well, as you are probably noticing as you scan the interwebs, a lot of my colleagues have begun doing the uh, Gothic home decor halls and haunts. I just did my first one. Uh, of at home because at home is always the very first chain to really go all out and put out a whole bunch of Halloween stuff Usually in June. I think this year was a little bit late. I think uh, I mean I didn't we have we now have a location here in New York Which is shocking because it's it's like two months old. It's it's our very first at home location and uh, I kept putting it off because the employees at the store were telling me like don't bother coming down here because it's all in boxes in the back It hasn't even put out yet they finally started putting stuff out. We went, we bought a bunch of really great stuff and we filmed it. So I hope to bring you that episode soon. If you've been following the Gothic homemaking saga, then you know that it's, um, I just basically decided that instead of doing an episode every single week, like I did for most of last year, thank you, Timothy. I'm going to put that towards one of my society six <laughs> objects or maybe, maybe some Halloween decor. Thank you very much. Um, I, uh, I, we, we bought a whole bunch of really, really cool stuff at, at home. And if you've been following the, the Gothic homemaking saga, 
instead of doing like an episode every single week like I did for most of last year and nearly drove myself into the poorhouse and insane simultaneously, I am focusing on Black Labyrinth, which we're going to get to later. So I'm doing uh, gothic homemaking as I can and as the mood arises. I've been working on an episode where I made two recipes of acorn squash, never having seen an acorn squash before. Already got my ticket for October 1st. So I expect to see you in Atlanta before that. Absolutely. Count on it, John. I will see you there. And thank you very much. So um, in any case, that episode, you know, it's always the episodes that seem really, really easy that end up being like, strangely difficult. So I think I've shot like 12 different times for the acorn squash episode, and it's still not finished. But it's almost finished. And now, of course, as it's like just about to, like as it's like maybe some editing and maybe a tiny little pickup shot away from being aired. Now it's got to be pushed further down the line because if I don't show you what I found out at home, you know, if I, if I show it to you in two weeks, you're going to be like, yeah, we saw all that stuff a month ago. So I have to kind of get on that. Thank you, Josh. What are the chances of you playing the ex lovers lover drinking game again? By the way, I'm excited about seeing you in Vegas. I'll see you in Vegas. I have cut, down my drinking so severely that the chances of me even having a bottle on stage at this point are very slim because I would die. Really. Like if I, I used, as, as many of you know, I just, I was accustomed to drinking an entire bottle of rum in an hour and, and being fine. If I drank an entire bottle of rum today, I would fall over dead. So uh, I, I think if I'm going to do the ex-lovers lover drinking game, it's the audience that will be drinking, not me. Uh, in any case, what the hell was I talking about? You weren't <laughs> listening to me? I was uh, looking for spam. <gasps> oh, you're looking. <laughs> she's like, I'm looking for spam. It's in the kitchen cabinet. Huh? Um, so in any case, we're talking about, I guess, gothic homemaking and yeah, so I have to show you like the at home episode sooner than later because otherwise it'll just be irrelevant if I show it to you three weeks from now. And the other thing that's kind of like in the works is that I'm one episode away from my hundredth episode of Gothic Homemaking. It's so hard. Thank you. It's so hard to believe that I've made one, well, I've made 98, 98 ish episodes. Um, I know, Kane. I'm a, I'm a dad. I am le legitimately a dad. They're making fun of my spam in the, their spam in the cabinet joke because I'm a, because it's a dad joke. But I'm a dad, guilty as charged. Um, yeah. So anyway, so the hundredth episode is going to be coming up, and you know, people, God, I took a poll. I think it was in December, about what the hundredth episode should be, and pretty much everybody said, um, Gothic Home Tour. Weed vape, one hit, one sup. No, no, no. I don't know what that's all about. Um, so in any case, it's probably going to be a Gothic home tour. So we need to start filming that soon. Yeah. But this place is such a wreck that I think it has to be done in pieces. Like when I point the camera this way, like all the clutter from over there is going to have to be over here. And then when I turn the camera around, I have to put all the clutter on that side. Uh, but I think it clearly needs to get done because that's the hundredth episode. And I think the next episode will be the 99th. So we're nearly there. So thank you so much to you guys for watching this series for four or five long years and allowing me to get to a point where I would have a hundred episodes. It's pretty bad. And is that, um, is that all about Gothic homemaking? I think that's pretty much it about Gothic homemaking, which leads us to Halloween plates. No, it leads us to Black Labyrinth. And by now, I'm sure pretty much all of you know that my next album is called Black Labyrinth, and it is uh, inspired by the film Labyrinth, in which David Bowie played the Goblin King, and it is, in fact, a tribute to David Bowie. Many of Bowie's longtime collaborators have already recorded on the album. His drummer, Sterling Campbell, his bass player, Gail Ann Dorsey, his guitarist, Jerry Leonard, a backup, his backup singer, Holly Palmer. Gin mas, gin mas. Oh, Mark, Mark Platy, who played bass and produced a bunch of his songs. It is an epic, epic 
epic record. It's an, an actual musical, and there are 20 songs. Thank you, Yaya Kitty. Okay. Yeah, Spooky Ghost. Michael Greco says, shout out to all of us there from the beginning of Gothic Homemaking with the Indiegogo campaign. Indeed. Oh, crap. The camera just, okay. Camera turned off and turned back on. Let me know that you can still see me. Just throw me a quick comment. Say, you're yes. okay. My, you know, my Yumi says yes. I'm guessing it's true with the rest of you. Will you sing one of David Bowie's songs from the Labyrinth movie? Uh, Raslina asks, and the answer is, I do plan to do... Okay, uh, well, for, I want to interrupt you one quick second, because Jumpy Guts says, can you say trans men are men? I need some validation. I can absolutely say trans men are men, because trans men are men, but you shouldn't need validation. Uh, I mean, let me just put it this way. I wish we lived in a world where you didn't feel that you needed validation, but I totally get why you feel that way. And I say that because as somebody who um, has never been quite normal in the eyes of most people, I also feel like, and somebody who didn't have a very positive father figure, I also feel like I needed validation but i've had to find i've I, i've discovered one way or another that the only validation you really truly need at the end of the day is your own so i hope you have that because that is the most important thing that you can have to live a happy life i hope that wasn't rambly i hope that made sense uh say on to help with the album before i hit the merch table thank you so very very much i'm going to put that to very good use Thank you. The trans men are more manly because most cis men can't handle menstrual cramp simulators. Oh my God, that's true. That's a truth. So uh, in any case, Black Labyrinth is full of David Bowie collaborators and there's 20 songs and I am, uh, there's only like three of them so far that I haven't started recording yet. So I think I've like recorded 16 of them more or less. And where, what was the other question? Oh, David Bowie song. There is supposed to be one song from Labyrinth on the album. And judging from the story, oh, you're welcome, Junkie. Judging from the story of Black Labyrinth, that song should be Magic Dance. <laughs> but, but I love Underground so much that I'm thinking of doing possibly a medley at the end of the album. We'll see. Ironically, as the world falls down, is my actual favorite. It doesn't really make it wouldn't make a lot of sense in the in the story of Black Labyrinth, um, but that's my actual favorite. And I used to play it live. I played it live for a good year and a half, like after Bowie died. And I was very emotional. Some very emotional moments on stage singing that song, but that will not be on the album. Who knows? Maybe it'll be a secret track. We'll see. But that's what's going on with Black Labyrinth. And there's a book as well. There's a book and it's illustrated and it has 20 full color illustrations to match with each one of the songs. And it is prose. I am writing it much like a novel. It was originally supposed to be, right, what beard products do you use? Uh, sweat. What are you laughing at me? <laughs> it's true. That's what I use. It is true. The only beard product that I use is my own sweat. That's it. Yeah, I don't use beard products. I once had somebody come up to me and they were like, it was like at a festival or a convention or something. They were like, come over to my booth. There's something you really need. I'm like, okay, what's that? And they're like, beard oil. And I'm like, I, I wash my face to get the oil out of my beard. Why would I put, I put more, more oil in my beard? I'm greasy enough as it is. So anyway, uh, so yeah, it's an illustrated book. I originally thought it was going to be like one page of text and one illustration and one page of text and one illustration, sort of like The Legend of Candy Claws. And then I realized that I had just way too much to say and way too much story to tell. And I'm going to take this moment to share with you some of the illustrations that have been finished. That's a good question, Ms. Mr. Black. I think, no, no, I think you buy the ticket to Creature Feature and my concert is included kind of like at Dragon Con or most uh, conventions. In any case, I want to go over here to my control panel for a second so I can show you some images. 
check this out. This is the very first drawing that was done for the book. This is when Prince Valerian, uh, the main character of the book, who may or may not actually be a prince, meets the friends in the dark. Let me know if they look familiar to you. You may recall in the movie, there were characters called Fieries, and they had very colorful feathers, and they um, surround Sarah and maybe try to remove her head. Well, I'm not going to say these are the Fieries, but I will say that because the dark shadow has fallen over the land of the Goblin Kingdom, it's entirely possible that the Fieries have lost all of their feathers and now look like creepy gargoyles. And this amazing illustration was done by Erin Horrors. And now I'm going to show you another one. This is uh, This illustration corresponds with the song Little White Lies. And in the story Little White, well, in the song Little White Lies, Prince Valerian arrives at the labyrinth and he's told that there's a little caterpillar that can show him the way. But when he gets there instead, he finds a small white snake who's apparently eaten the caterpillar and the caterpillar's wife. Uh, hold on a second. I just want to address this. Uh, no offense, this is low-key boring. Aaron, why are you here? Why are you here? If you're bored, go do something exciting. Please go find something fun to do for your own sake and so that I don't have to read your rude comments. So in any case, here we are uh, at uh, Little White Lies. And the like, like lies, they just get bigger and bigger. And eventually the small white snake turns into a big giant, white, uh, big giant snake that's ready to eat our hero. And then down here, this is the illustration for Safe in Your Love. That was rude. Okay, so I'm, okay, hold on a second. I'm rude because you told me I'm boring and I told you you should find something fun to do. All right. Ciao. So here is the illustration for Safe in Your Love. And this is very much like the, um, the uh, what's the song? as the world falls down kind of moment. They're at a masquerade ball. This is the moment where our hero, Prince Valerian, who may or may not actually be a prince, finds out that the Goblin King has died and he is at his tomb. And there are many, many more illustrations. Well, there's 20 in total, in fact, and, and they're coming along really, really beautifully. Thanks to the illustrators, Abigail Larson, Erin Horrors, and Drea D. Art. And there's now a whole bunch of other illustrators uh, working on character studies for the book. So they are designing the characters so that when the characters get to uh, our illustrators, they already know what they look like. Save us some time and, and create some consistency throughout the book. So in any case, I hope you have enjoyed that peek into Black Labyrinth. Of course, if you're a uh, a patron on Patreon, you are seeing all of these illustrations as they happen. Rabid Vulcan, hey there, I've been listening to your music since I was a kid, and The Devil's Burst is still one of my favorite albums. I'm really happy you're still making music, and I can't wait for the new album. Thank you very, very much. And incidentally, The Devil's Burst vinyl, I guess, sold out and is now uh, is going to be back in print. We changed the color on the vinyl, though, made it a really cool orange with uh, red swirls in it. And Uki Spooky Vinyl is coming as well. And that's sort of like a translucent purple vinyl disc. And those are coming, I believe, in a couple of weeks. So you should be able to get those in my web store soon. In any case, as I was saying, if you're a patron on Patreon, you're seeing these illustrations as they're being made and you're hearing the songs as they're being recorded. So please do consider, if you can afford it, to join me there on Patreon. There is a link in the video description below. And that is officially everything that I need to say for my July 2021 video newsletter. So, and now I am going to take this message off. There we go. Because questions are now open. If you have a question and uh, while we are all here, please fire away and I will do my very best to answer it for you. 
Uh, thank you, Grant. I really appreciate that. I am also very, very much looking forward to finishing Black Labyrinth someday. Plus Ultra, have you seen the vampire series of Daria Cohen's channel? Who hasn't? 37 million people have, in fact. Yeah, really amazing work. Where's your most expensive cheap fan? Oh, we lost it. Yeah. Is, we still had it, though, in the last stream, or have we had we lost it? No, you used oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That that fan, we lost it on Pride at the Pride Parade. We have another one. But now we have another one that's a lot, a lot gayer. We got this one at Pride. It is very, very, very fabulous. And beautiful. It's gorgeous and it's huge and it's really reflective and really, really beautiful. <laughs> What's your favorite ride or attraction? My favorite ones are haunted houses and freak shows. I don't support the ones that show abuse. Hmm. Says Madison. Madison, I it took me well, if you watch my um song meanings and origins about the devil and Mr. Jones, you'll hear my story about haunts and how I used to be absolutely terrified of them and how Doug Jones cured me. But I would have to say, I, I mean, Disney's Haunted Mansion is probably still my favorite ride of all time. Uh, what is your advice to a new goth? Asks Rose. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Uh, do the things that you love doing. Dress the, like, look at the culture and say, what do I like most about this? And then incorporate those things into your daily life. I don't know that there's anything more to it than that. Find, you know, find cool bands. Um, definitely listen to the classics, you know, Bauhaus, Susie, The Cure, etc. Christian Death. Uh, but yeah, just as long as, just do the things Find the things in the scene that make you happy and make those part of your life is the best thing I could say to you. And never mind the bullocks. Don't worry about what people tell you. Uh, yeah, Roman says, <laughs> rest in peace, fan. No joke. Oh, hold on. We've got to get rid of some rude people. I don't know what it is tonight. Some people being rude. Uh, Heidi says, you were a little boy once and didn't have an easy childhood. What's the best way I can support my eight-year-old nephew as he struggles with depression? Oh, wait, where'd it go? Oh, oh my God, there's, hold on a second. I've got to get rid of somebody who's being very, very good. Okay. Um, I don't know. I always feel like I'm so much more eloquent when I have time to think about these issues. Give me a second. I'm going on 40. How does one rock the older goth lifestyle? <laughs> I need a Volte hug. Janet Vixen, aka Vixen. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm 54. And I, I think if anything, I've just maybe toned down my look a little bit. Like I don't go as, as flamboyant as I used to. But, uh, you know, you can never go wrong with all black, I say. Um, in any case, so getting back to your original question, how do you, uh, gosh, that's such a hard question to answer. Um, love, kindness, understanding, and listening. Just, you'd be surprised the power of listening. Just listen, just, just being an ear, just being an ear to listen to what your nephew might be concerned about. Just having somebody who is not judgmental, is not going to chastise them for what they think or how they feel. I think that's huge. I think that's probably the biggest thing. What does Jennifer say? Jennifer, good evening. Hope you're doing well. Just got home from work. Ready to relax with my fellow gals. Welcome aboard. Um, oh, you're not going to Sinister Creature Con in Northern California. Crystal Rose, I absolutely am. It just so happens that it has been postponed to June 2022. So it's going to be a little while, but I will be there. Uh, Harley says, how do you choose between emo and goth? I don't. I just partake of everything that I enjoy. No need to choose. The Night is one of my favorite songs, immediately, plus a smile on my face when I hear it, says Peach Citrus. Thank you. Giving this. Oh, I remember discover. Thank you for showing me that one. I remember discovering your music in sixth grade. Didn't realize you did the song Brains Until I Found You. Still bump your songs. Thank you, Ascending Apothecon. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. 
I'm just curious if you have a copy of your album, Hate Lives in a Small Town, lying around. In it's the only one I need. Sean, sorry I missed your comment earlier. I, I have three directly under the couch on which I'm sitting. So I will try to remember to bring one to Seattle because I know you're going to be at that show. To the guy who wants to quit his stable job, build up a savings and then quit. Build up a savings and then quit. I mean, build up a savings and then quit would be great if you could build up a savings. You know, I've never had a whole lot of luck building up a savings. If you can do that, yes, absolutely. Uh, or you could do what I did with music, which was I just kind of kept doing my day job, which at the time was animating and directing TV commercials. And I did the music on the side until the point where I started making money off the music. And then I sort of stopped doing the animation. So you can, it's its tough to juggle, but I, that's probably the most secure way is to kind of keep your day job and be doing your other stuff on the side until that picks up enough traction that you could live off of it. Hey, Voltaire says, Boxer, are you ever listened to ASMR type videos? Not really. Like I checked out one or two, but and they were interesting, but it's not really my thing. Um, okay, here's the uh, oh, where's the best place for goth clothes shopping? You know, sadly, in New York City, our best goth clothes store just closed, Gothic Renaissance. But I would check out Punk Rave. It's a brand that I like a lot, and a lot of the stuff that I've worn on stage recently has been Punk Raves. I would check that out. You can get them online. He says, what motivates you to be so productive? Uh, because I hate doing things I don't want to do. But I really derive so much joy from writing stories, from writing songs, from performing, from making gothic homemaking episodes, from doing DIY stuff. So it's I'm motivated by the fact that it quite simply just brings me a lot of joy. And I... If I'm not doing stuff like that, I, I, I may not be as happy. So that that's my motivation. Star Echo, thanks for sticking around. See you next time. Rabbit Gut says, did you enjoy animating? Uh, it, it was like a love and hate relationship. Like I enjoy, I enjoy the process of creating something really great. I enjoyed the process of making something. Smooth was always the thing for me. Like the animation had to be super smooth and realistic. And that brought me a tremendous amount of joy. The posing something for 72 hours in a row to get four seconds of animation, I didn't love that part so much. But it is part of the uh, it's part of the process, unfortunately. Uh, thank you for noticing my table on Instagram. My pleasure, Harley. The song you wrote and performed for the Vampire series was so sweet at the end. Thank you for the smile. Mm, there was a few of them. So, oh, I think you mean... Uh, stuck with you that I sang with Amanda Palmer. No, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Would you ever play music live on a live feed? Eh, sometimes I have. In some of these video newsletters, I've actually uh, whipped out the guitar and played a few songs. Can you make a Cameo account, please? I've got one, Ezzy. Just go to Cameo and search Aurelio Voltaire, and you will find me there. I've already done like four or five of them, and I enjoy doing them. So come find me. I named, you know, I should put a link to that. I should put a link to the cameo thing in my video. Uh, can't wait to see you in Tampa. See you there, kid. Literally, kid at most. That's the name. I'm not just calling someone kid for no reason. Uh, okay, so, and Sonia says, just re just rewound to your tour dates. As far as I'm concerned, your Dragon Con streak is intact. See you there and in Knoxville. See you then. Animation is nearly rewarding as it is frustrating. Yes, Grant, correct. I always like to say to my students, uh, I no longer teach, but I uh, used to say to my students, that animation is easy if you don't care how it looks. But if you care how it looks, it's really hard. Uh, would you read a Jeremy Robinson novel, says The Ascending Apothecon? I, to be honest with you, I haven't read anything in years. Again, because I spend all my time like making stuff, and so I don't, I don't ever feel like I have time to put aside to read a whole book. I've read like a couple of health, what's the word I'm looking for? Self, self-help books. 
you know, like a couple of books about, you know, managing your career, your life, stuff like that. But I, I just can never seem to figure out, like if I had the time to read a novel, I'd write a novel. And I've got two on the back burner that are just sitting there. Nothing's happening with them because I don't ever feel like I have time. Uh, has been hotel or hell of a boss? Again, why not both? Why not both? Um, I, Scarlet Letter I, or oh, I, I is species of lemur a good choice for a gothic fabric design? I mean, those those animals are creepy looking as hell. So I think you could absolutely make that goth, especially if you stick some bat wings on it. Um, uh, Psy X9. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I'm turning 45 on Thursday. When you were my age, did you find yourself simplifying your style or did you feel the need to turn things up? Thank you. Uh, oh, your handle is based on the 69 glyph for cancer. Got it. Um, you know, I don't, I just think that there came a point. Well, let me tell you something. I used to wear stretch vinyl pants and tights for years. And there came a point where I looked ridiculous in them. And I realized that like spandex was a privilege. It was not a right. And I, I realized I just looked like an idiot in these pants. Like I'm just starting to look like a tired old drag queen. Like I'm really, it's, this is not a good look for me as I got older. And so I just decided to try something a little bit more like classically elegant. And I started wearing suits and ties and, and I kind of like went down that road and it was just kind of a natural progression. People still think I'm kind of spooky when they see me, I guess. They still think I'm a Dracula, you know, like an elegant Dracula. Thank you. <laughs> and then I went to Indonesia. I spent a bunch of time in Indonesia. And when I was there, like, so keep in mind, for years, I wore long sleeve shirts with a tie and a blazer every single day of the year, including the middle of summer. Now, you mean I were talking about this earlier. Indonesia changed me. I spent months there and it's so hot. And I started wearing like these safari shirts, you know. I mean, truth be told, this is like a work shirt, you know but they kind of look like safari shirts. I started wearing these shirts and I got really into it. Now it's like, it's all I wear. But I like to think it's like a, it's like a, I don't know, vaguely masculine archeologist, like uh, what is it that you always say I look like? Mm. Indiana, Jones. Indiana Jones. He says, I look, Mayumi says I look like Indiana Jones, like a spooky Indiana Jones. I am, Handsome. And thank you. I am 1000% for looking like a spooky Indiana Jones. I'm totally okay with that. Favorite horror movie or show? Oh, Maya, I don't know. I don't know. I love so many of them. But I can tell you that Mayumi and I have been watching classic horror movies for weeks now because I'm showing her all the universal horror movies. And we've, we've been through a lot of them. And last night we watched one I didn't even know existed called The Ghost of Frankenstein, which was kind of great I and mean, it was obviously kind of a b-movie for for one of the universal classics but it was really kind of great and it was so cool to see lon cheney playing frankenstein i was kind of blown away so we're really kind of digging into the classic stuff presently and in fact mayumi didn't know what twilight zone was up until a couple months ago so we also <laughs> try to like cram in a couple of episodes of twilight zone every single night so we're doing a twilight zone um marathon as well Ah, you always dress sexy. Thank you, Hope. Uh, Edie, wasn't the vinyl un uncomfy in the summer? Not only was it not uncomfy, this is so gross, and I probably shouldn't tell you this, but literally in the middle of the summer wearing vinyl pants, I would take off my shoes and pour out a pint of liquid sweat. It was gross. It was gross. I'm kind of glad I don't do that anymore. Uh, Sinamo says, hello, I wanted to ask if there's going to be any live shows in Russia in the near future. Sorry if that's a stupid question. It is not a stupid question. I have performed in Russia almost every year for the last few years, and I just noticed that my work visa has expired. So I do not believe there's going to be a show this year, and if there is going to be a show, then I have to go and like spend $1,000 and get a whole new Russian work visa. So, But who knows? I would say probably not this year, but hopefully next year. Uh, Mr. Black, dear Volterra, I need guidance. I have a stable job that pays well, and I'm, whoops, I just lost you. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? The comment snapped right out of my hand. Uh, oh, there you go. 
a stable job that pays well, and I'm loved there, but I hate the job. I have no time to do what I love, writing and gothic crafts, etc. Should I sacrifice my happiness for stable income? You're asking probably the wrong guy because I don't know that I'm going to give you good advice. I mean, I would absolutely never be in a situation where I hated what I did all day. I'd rather be dead. So it's true. I'd rather be dead, which is why I've never had an office job or I've like never worked in like a store or anything like that. If I had to go to the same place every single day and do something I didn't like, I would probably not survive. And I don't mean it's not hyperbole. I would probably not survive. So I'm the wrong person to ask because I would say absolutely not quit your job and go do what you love. But that might be really irresponsible. You might have a family to feed. You might have rent that needs to get paid that isn't going to get paid right away from your arts and crafts. And I've seen what you do. I think you're very talented. And I think you definitely could have a future in it. But it might take time to build up an audience and to build up a reputation and to have people buying stuff consistently enough uh, for that to be the case. But I would say, like I told somebody else in the same stream, you know, do both as much as you can until the one that you really want to do takes off enough that you can quit the other one. Uh, is it easy to live in New York City as a goth alternative person here in Mexico? People stare too much, says Fern. I'm actually shocked by that, Fern, because I live in Mexico City part time and we see muchos, muchos darks caminando por la calle. Yeah. Eh, sin embargo, hay más gente alternativa, yo creo, en la Ciudad de México que en Nueva York. Wouldn't you say? There's more alternative people in Mexico City than in New York. Yeah, yeah, probably yeah. Now, granted, Mexican culture does happen to be more traditional, so there might be that friction, like with people who aren't spooky. But uh, I think it's probably not that different. You know, it depends where you are in New York City. If you're walking through the East Village, if you don't run into any douchebags from out of town or from the boroughs who come in to make fun of people who live here, then you're probably going to do great. But there's always the possibility you're going to run into somebody ignorant who's going to say something mean to you here in New York City as well. So, you know, you can stroll into the wrong neighborhood where you are not welcome and, and people might make fun of you. We were talking about this the other day about how I saw a woman the other day walking down the street like practically naked. And I'm not exaggerating. She was wearing a chain mail dress and nothing else and the chain mail wasn't tight chain mail it was like giant open diamonds and i was like okay respect it takes a lot of nerve to walk down the street wearing that but i said if i wore that you know it wouldn't be long before another man became enraged at me and and started calling me names and it would, it would, it would be a bad time i thought even here in new york city so unfortunately, you know, anywhere you go, there's going to be people who are afraid of the strange. Less so here than in a lot of places, and I think less so in CD Mex than in a lot of places. So I think we're lucky for that. New York City show, asking multiple times. Sorry for asking multiple times. No worry, Harris. There's presently not a New York City show in the works, but I think it's a matter of time before there will be. I just got to figure out when that's going to happen. What's your favorite cryptid? Cryptid, cryptid. Oh, Jersey Devil. That's an easy one. Jersey Devil. I even wrote a book. It's called Call of the Jersey Devil. If you like 80s horror, you might enjoy it. Check it out. Um, yeah, Kane says, you say an elegant Dracula as if Dracula is an elegant always. Hmm. See, now that you're gonna now you're testing me. Now you're going to make me think about like a version of Dracula where he was like a real bum. <laughs> but yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. What blew my mind when I met you was just how tall you are. Like, man, you dwarfed me at 5'9". I am 6'1". I'm not super tall, but, you know, I do occasionally meet people who are taller than me, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Uh, but yeah, 6'1 is kind of tall. What's your favorite Indonesian food? Asks Sunny. Uh, what's my favorite Indonesian food? Nasi lemak. Nasi lemak, which is like coconut rice with a hard boiled egg and some chicken curry and some preserved fish. I love it. Uh, 
Rainbow says, hey, Voltaire, your song Innocent is helping me deal with my self-esteem and self-deprecation problem quite a bit, and you've inspired me a lot artistically, too, over the years as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening, and I'm really, really glad the song is helping. I'd like to say a vampire. I'd like, I, I'd say like a vampire pirate. That, yeah, Katie, I am definitely a vampire as well. <laughs> um... What a hell of a boss and has been hotel in both great cartoons. I agree. Um, do you think listening to goth music is a requirement to be goth? Uh, I mean, look, I, I'm not going to be that guy who's going to tell you you're not goth because you don't do X, Y, Z. I think that's rubbish. I think that's complete rubbish. Oops. Is it coming back? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all right. All right. Camera, the camera does that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't approve of that mentality of like there being gatekeepers and people telling you like that you're doing it wrong or you're doing it right like i i nobody should care if you're doing what you enjoy doing that's that's there should be all there is to it there shouldn't be more to it than that um however since the goth aesthetic was born out of a musical subculture i think it's helpful i think it's cool i mean you know if you want to dress goth and listen to rap that's fine too i don't have a problem with that but I think listening to God, it's not a requirement to be God, but it's, you know, it's kind of part of the culture. I would highly recommend it. How did you get interviewed by MTV about steampunk? Oh, thank you, Josh. Uh, I was performing at a steampunk festival and they just walked up and said, can we talk to you? And I said, absolutely. I was like, MTV, maybe they'll play a music video of mine. They didn't. So, you know, did a little interview. That was cool. Um... You look like Zohan, and you don't mess with the Zohan. Okay, I don't think I know who Zohan is. Where did I get my necklace? Asks Harley. I got it in my web store. You can get one of these. It's a Voluterian key, Voluterian key blade necklace, and it's in my web store. And it says, it's so easy when you're evil on the shaft. And it also has my name. It won't let me into my house, but I'll never forget who I am. There is that much. Uh, to the bottom of the C2, asks Jeff. Hmm. Let's let's get through Black Labyrinth <laughs> first, mm. which seems like a giant mountain to climb, and then we'll see about to the bottom of the sea too. Um, hair is silky smooth. Mine? It's L'Oreal because I'm worth it. <laughs> Phantasm Suspiria. Uh, is that are you asking me which I like better? I'd probably go with Phantasm. I, I saw, I tell you, I I had to, I've seen Suspiria like 12 times and like I can never remember what it's about. And like I had to sit myself down one day and say, I've seen this movie a million times and I still don't remember what happens in it. And then like I watched it really consciously and now I can for, finally remember what the hell it was about. But I, I really, I think I should see the remake to see if that resonates any better. Uh, Voltaire, what merch will you have at Dragon Con? All of it. Do you have any panels planned? Not as of yet. It's still too early for that. But I'll have vinyl records, CDs, uh, necklaces, <gasps> goblins. Got my goblins with me. And a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, Black Labyrinth on Broadway ambitions? Asked Lauren. Absolutely. I would kill for that to be the case. Uh, the mayor says, you guys are so cute. Any goth wedding plans? I feel like you both look stunning and set the scene to be amazing. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Thank you. Sir, what's your favorite Indonesian food? Oh, I just did that. Uh, nasi lamak. Is my nasi lamak might be Malaysian, to be precise. Nasi go Well, I like nasi goreng, too. I like all the nasis. N A S S I Nasi Lama N A S I Nasi Lama something like that. Uh, I don't know. Far New York City is just as annoying to walk around as a goth. Yeah, it can be. Would you get a Honduras white bat as a pet? Uh, in theory, I would like nothing more than to have a bat as a pet. But I'm staunchly anti-pets. I believe animals should be in the wild. And I don't believe they should be pets at all. So I prob, and it's also completely illegal to own a bat. So 
unless I lived in Indonesia and one decided to live in the tree behind my house, I probably would never have a bat as a pet, but I certainly dream of it. Chicago misses you when you're returning to the Midwest. Good question, Chunky. I do need to book a Chicago show, but I haven't yet. Sailor, Arwen, not really a horror movie, but Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein is one of my favorite movies. Absolutely. Well, you know, I mean, like I think of it as a, see, growing up, I didn't know there was a difference between horror and fantasy and science fiction. I just, I, I was into monsters. So anything with a monster was a monster movie and hence something I was probably going to love. And I loved the Abbott and Costello monster movies as a kid. I really loved those. Um, Okay, so Crystal says, Sinister Creature Con says August 15th, 2021. So that's confusing because that is not what they told me. They, unless maybe they're having an addition in August that I'm not going to be a part of and I'm playing at the one in June, or maybe their website is outdated. I think it's entirely possible they're at, their website might just be outdated. Uh, Renee says, have you seen Comedy of Terrors? I don't think I have. I don't think I have. Is it on Shutter? I have Shutter, and I have Amazon Prime, and then outside of that, I just have to pay to see it from some other streaming service. Uh, well, we're all paying to see everything at this point, but you know what I mean. Good to hear Mayumi's voice. Hey. Hope hi. you're both doing well. Thank you, Aksagira. Uh, what's your favorite food in general? Uh, uh, I don't know, but I can tell you my favorite restaurant is Indochine in New York City. And it has been my favorite restaurant since 1984. It's hard to believe. I never let them forget that, which probably makes me really obnoxious. Because the, the it's, I don't know, it's like a CNB scene kind of place. It always has been. I first went when I was 17 because I heard Duran Duran hung out there. That was like the one reason I went there. Not, I'm not trying to lie or front or anything. I went there because I heard Duran Duran hung out there. It was 1984. I was 17. Give me a break. The food was amazing. Everybody was super cool and super elegant. And I was like, oh, my God, this is like a dream world. This is like something out of a movie. The food was amazing. It is still exactly the same to this day. And so every time I go there, which is you know, kind of infrequent because it's sort of a special event place for me, every time I go there, you know, the, the waitresses are all like supermodels. And they'll always come over, and I always, like, I used to come here in 1984. I sound like somebody's dad because I am somebody's dad. Uh -oh. Did I miss something? Yeah. Um, no, I think you know, it's mm -hmm. Oh, 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 mm. what did I do? Okay, there we go. We're back on track. Mm. No, wait, hold on. Hold on. Oh, what have I done? to my oh, I used to go to Alchemy on Mondays when I was in the city because Voltaire went there. Oh, that's hilarious, Regin. <laughs> uh, love every album. Excited. May I ask what Underground is about? Oof. I, I, Underground is a the it's it's about a relationship that I was in and we broke up and I was completely devastated and I walked into like my usual cafe that I used to go to and she was there and I nearly lost my mind. One, one more to help conquer the mountain. Love everything about the album. Thank you, Say. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I keep forgetting the cameras up there. Uh, have you ever been on tour in Japan? I've never been on tour in Japan, Mana, but I have performed in Japan. So like tour would mean like probably two or more dates. I've played in Tokyo and I've played in Osaka, but I have uh, never been officially like on a tour. I'd love to do that. That would be so cool. When can we expect your cologne? Gosh, Javlikyo. I wish I could tell you it's on hold. The bottle just didn't work out, and we are still struggling to find a place that can make the bottle to my exacting specifications, which apparently must be crazy because nobody can seem to make this bottle. 
But I can tell you that there's other cool stuff in the works. I'm looking at some of it right now, but I can't talk about it yet. So I probably shouldn't have brought it up. Um, we should find a way to get you up to Hokkaido. Yeah, I'd love that. Ready to jump into a thermal pool with some snow monkeys. Thank you for pronouncing my name right. Mana Minori. That's easy for me because most languages are pronounced like Spanish. English is, believe it or not, one of the weird languages, you know, like where the alphabet A, E, I, O, U, where the, the vowels are not pronounced like they are in all Romance languages, right? Like A, E, E, O, U, or even Japanese. Um, so yeah, it's just because I speak Spanish. Will you ever perform I'm Sorry? I have. It's been a long time. I probably don't remember how it goes anymore. Please come to Costa Rica, says Katya. I'd love to return to Costa Rica. Oh, my God, my very first night in Costa Rica, people warned me about the howler monkeys. But, man, no warning. No warning was enough to uh, prepare me. For the sound of a howler monkey when you're staying in a house by yourself in the middle of a jungle. It really sounds like King Kong. And then you see them during the day and you're like, this tiny little thing made that enormous sound. Like, I thought I was on Skull Island. I loved Costa Rica. really loved it. Um, thank you, Mandy. No worries. Hello, I got my Goblin holder and put a vampire blood hand sanitizer in it. Match made in heaven. Thank you, Chelsea. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, Friday the 13th would be fun. Would be fun for after Black Labyrinth, of course. Or oh, Friday the 13th song. Yeah, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. Uh, my gothic style, says Madison, is very elegant and feminine. A lot of people, including a waitress. Oh, why did these... these Oh, including waitress complimented one of my outfits and said that she loves Victorian fashion. Well, you know, I love I love the intersection of goth and Victorian. Not all goth is Victorian goth, but I really do love that particular style. See you more. Rainbow and bones. Oh, would I ever design more jewelry, Rainbow? Uh, my guess is probably. Um, you know, I've, as you know, I've designed this one, and then I made these beautiful bat, uh, design. Well, actually, I didn't design, really. Uh, Vrana Raven, this incredible designer from Russia, was making these bats, and I was like, hey, could you make it, change it a little bit, make it like this, make it like that, and, uh, you know, we'll sell them. And uh, But it was so difficult getting merchandise out of Russia that I think we made 48 of them and didn't make any more. Uh, so it was just really, really difficult. Uh, with the shipping and importing or exporting with from Russia, but yeah, I got to imagine that there's more jewelry in my future. Do you have a favorite metal cover of any of your songs? Do I, do you have a favorite metal cover of any of your songs? I don't think I've ever heard a metal cover of any of my songs. Well, that's not entirely true because for Christmas last year, Mayumi had a friend of hers do a metal cover of "Riding a Black Unicorn." which was really lovely. That was really cool to hear. Um, Vanguard says they're an hour late. Glad I could make it into the Q&A. Thank you for wishing me a happy birthday. My pleasure. Okay. Oh, and uh, Rainbow thanks you for bringing their, their question to my attention. I've listened to Chupando on loop ever since last year. I love it so much. Do you have any plans to do more songs with Mayumi? I do, in fact, after Black Labyrinth. It was supposed to happen before Black Labyrinth. I was going to make an all-Spanish album. And it's mostly like existing songs of mine, but translated into Spanish. And Mayumi will be singing quite a lot on that one. And uh, But then I decided that I wanted my next album, which is my 13th album, to be Black Labyrinth. So now the Spanish album will probably come out after. Evangeline says, had a crappy day today. I'm censoring for the kids. And I'm so happy that the newsletter is live. Uh, you make my day so much better. Thank you for being here. 
I'm gonna make sure your message can be seen. Mortal Kombat is riding a black unicorn. One of your favorite songs you've done. It's up there. It's up there. I do dig that song. That song was kind of a turning point for me, to be honest with you. It was like a point in my career where I realized, oh, like people are listening to what I say, and I could be writing songs that are like still edgy, still dark, still cool, still fun, but have an uplifting message rather than just trying to be like the, as outrageous as I can think of being, you know? So that song, that song was kind of a turning point for me, like that one and Innocent. Uh, and, you know, there's certainly some very uh, body songs on that album, but I would say that was a that song was a big turning point. And I think it sounds really epic. I was kind of going for acoustic metal. I wanted to sound like Iron, like what if Iron Maiden was a folk band? I hope I, I hope I achieved that goal. Still at attention whenever you want to get back to the Spanish album. Absolutely, Daniel. Good to have you working on that. You would be great at writing a Disney song, says Say. Well, let me tell you, you're going to love the song. Uh, it, it was originally had a working title of When I Said I Was Evil, but now it's called The King of Villains, and it's one of the songs for Black Labyrinth, and it quotes like 12 Disney villains in the song. It's a really fun section, and I can't wait to share that with you guys. Just checking, will you be at Dragon Con? The website doesn't state it. Just making sure, driving five hours pretty much to see you. Kit Atmos, I will absolutely be at Dragon Con. So we will see you there. Girlfriend, MySpace me, and also when you're evil. Friend introduced me to your to you, and this is great. I love you so much. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you very much. Do you still pull people up on stage to sing when you're evil at the end of the show, or is that now a pandemic? No, no. I don't know because I haven't played in the better part of a year. I only had two shows during the previous year, so no, I didn't bring anybody up on stage. And now I, I it's like the least of my worries is am I going to bring people up on stage to sing when you're evil? The biggest, my biggest worry is, do I still remember how to sing and play guitar? Do I still remember how to entertain people? I honestly don't know. So come to my show in Seattle and find out. <laughs> I'm a mixture between perky goth and romantic goth, though, as a girly goth, a girly girl, and a goth. I come in many subsets. It's good to have variety. Uh, Mary says, it's my 49th birthday. First of all, happy birthday, Mary. When is yours? My birthday is January 25th, but I think that we should sing you happy birthday. Can we all, can we all get together here and sing happy birthday to Mary? I don't know. I, she's only going to hear my voice, but maybe we could all type along. I can sing too. You can sing too? Okay, ready? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mary. Happy birthday to you. 49 is a great year. I remember 49. No, I don't. No, I don't. Thank you all for singing along, people. I really, really appreciate it. And it is now 12.15. We should probably wrap this up. Let me say thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for listening to my music, for watching my Gothic homemaking show, for being a patron on Patreon. Thank you for buying my crazy Halloween stuff at my Society6 store or my Globlins. It keeps me in business and it keeps me doing what I love to do, whether it be writing books or writing songs or making films or making episodes or getting on stage and singing songs. These are the things that I love doing. I feel so incredibly privileged to be able to dedicate my life to doing what I enjoy and I don't ever for one split second forget that the only reason I get to do that is because of you, because you come to the shows, because you buy an album, a t-shirt, whatever it is. You keep me doing what I love, and for that, I am eternally 
grateful, and I shan't ever forget it. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time right here on Blair Voltaire. Bye, guys. I have no idea how to turn this off. <laughs> I still don't know. I really, you know, every time, every single month I say, I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to sign off and it's going to be so elegant and smooth and it never is. So here we go. Finger on the button. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your night. Goodbye. And it's the